I'm your host Elle and this is the Hotties on the Planet Fire Extension. I'd like to take the time to welcome Dilly from Stingray Records. Blessed love. <laughs> thanks for everything and thanks for being there with myself. Thank you. How, how did your name Dilly come about? <laughs> Alright, that's going back to the 70s. What it was, um, I was with a sound system called Love Cool Sound. Mm -hmm. And his son, Mikey Kuz, was a part of the sound. And them time I was like an MC. Okay. And um, the name really came off of Dillinger, the artist Dillinger, yeah. because as an MC now, in them times, like we used to imitate like certain artists, and I kind of had that Dillinger kind of vibe about Style. it, you know. Yeah. So it was Dillinger for a little while. Okay. That's what they used to call me, but the name started to get too long and then they, we just <laughs> broke it down and I did a sound up call and did it from there. So you said you started as an MC, so did you start off in sound systems? No, not really, no. My musical journey started off in a band okay. from school. Um, I teamed up with some classmates of mine which is still in the music business as well today. Okay. You know the singer Don Campbell, he yeah. was part of the group, he was the guitarist okay. and the singer and there was a great keyboardist as well, he's still here with us, his name is Carlton O'Gill, the better known to many as Bobulas. Okay. Mm -hmm. We had a bass player by the name of Kenneth McKenzie, another guitarist by Donovan Stewart, we had another guitarist called Mark Walcott, so, and I was the drummer of the band. Okay. Yeah, we was called Ilex. So, it kind of really started there, even though I still, music find me from my barn as far as I'm concerned, you know, growing up. Was it in the family? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, yeah. my mother and father always had their little selection and mm. I was a little troublemaker around <laughs> their music and when my brothers came, it was the same kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it started as from in a band, really, you know. Okay. So how did Stingray Records come about? Well, as we continue the journey then, because it's kind of a journey leading up to yeah. Stingray and things still, because not only being in a band, you know, just like I mentioned to you about the song Lord Cruz. Mm. So, leaving school, dropping out from an early age, mm. 15 and thing, you know, me and my friend them got together and we started to move amongst the sound Lord Cruz. Mm. And, um, I got my apprenticeship with them. I mean, during near the ending of the sound, um, you know, I started end up selecting and, and everything as well. So I played a few songs coming up during during the years, you know. So from Lord Cools, I met up with some friends in the Stonebridge area Northwest, mm -hmm. and we put a sound together which was called Savannah. Mm -hmm. So I was juggling between the band and, and playing band. sound mm. but really sound had a, a more greater loving at that time and um, again now um, Mikey was responsible for a lot of things Mikey could they had a radio station that time you know pirate radio station just kind of begin in mm. the UK and there was a big radio station in North West London called Time Radio mm. and you know, I became part of that station. Mm. You know, started in the graveyard shift and yeah. rise up to prime spot doing eight till ten. Mm. You know, so the love of the music carried me right through. And um it was from there again, me and Mikey got together and we built another song. Okay. Which was called Love Injection and the Gang. No, it wasn't the Love Injection that's there now. It was before their time, mm. you know. So, you know, sounds come with the same name all yeah. the time. But we was called Love Injection and the Gang. And, you know, this kind of lead up to me 
starting to get more involved now and I end up working with a company called Blue Mountain Records. Mm -hmm. um, that was about 87, 86, 87. And um, throughout working with Blue Mountain Records now, I get to understand the music business a lot more mm -hmm. in terms of like creating music and everything because I got linked up with the great Bobby Digital, you know, rest in peace, good Bridget. Mm. And um, I'm doing a lot of work for Blue Mountain Record. I made a lot of journey to Jamaica. And my journey to Jamaica was mainly amongst Bobby Digital. That was the main cause to mm. do with the production mm. of what he does. Because Blue Mountain Record was the sole agent for Bobby Digital production in the UK. Mm. So, you know, after a lengthy time along Blue Mountain Record, I ended up being the A&R. And um, I had to go and get the production. Yeah. The car we needed production to release and things like that. So I spent a lot of time among Pop Digital and then it kind of carried me back now to the days of being like, like a drummer or being, being amongst a band. Mm. Because that is what the layout was. You know, the studio was all about musicians coming, doing their thing and everything and I, I fell more in love with music again, you know, so it's like I step up again. Yeah. So, not only just playing sound, it's like, you know, I, I picked up the role of deciding that, you know what, this is what I want to do for myself. Yeah. You know, and just seeing the old setup of what Bobby has and everything, it's like it, it just really drove me that direction, you know? Your inspiration. Yeah, so when Blue Mountain, just before um, the company closed down, I started to get involved with my own production as well. Okay. And still dealing with Bobby Digital because, you know, I, I dealt with Bobby Digital up to this day still. And, um, you know, I got together with my brothers and that and we decide that we're going to start a label mm. and we decided to come with Stingray, mm. yeah? So about 89, 1990 was like one of our first production. Not really knowing much, but at the end of the day, it's a start, mm. you know? So I ended up voicing one of my school friends that was part of the band called Donovan. He's not even really a singer. Him sing a tune and I say, you know, <laughs> we're going to work with this tune, you know. And um, it really started from there, 1990, I would say, you know. Um, I continued from there and we started to work with a couple UK artists and um, I started to work with an artist called Sammy Levi. So going up from 1991, 92, it started to get better and better because you know we used to use studio at that time because we didn't have this studio here at that yeah. time and I used to make a lot of trip to Birmingham because my cousin in Birmingham you know have a little link with a friend that's called Dicky that had a community studio and you know we can go up there and use it free really so we used to go up there at night time and spend all night in the studio coming out in the morning and that was the vibe mm. so you know a lot of the work in the early days was done really in in Birmingham and because this guy Dickie as well he was very good because he was like a one-man band mm. so he's not only just an engineer he was a musician as well so in my beat rhythm and everything so what more you want you know what I mean everything in one yeah. and it continued and at the same time we decided that um, we're going to make a, a distribution company for ourselves, distributing our own stuff and not only our own stuff but Bobby Digital stuff because there was no more Blue Mountain I was still getting the production and everything and I'm saying you know all these big production we're getting is wasted you know because we're getting some real big shots like the Garnet, Silk, the Leroy, Smart, 
the Sanchez, you know, all the big names and that, you know. Yeah. And, you know, eventually even me being there amongst even these artists, it's like I ended up moving up the scale. Yeah. So I start to work with some big artists. So that's where now Stingray started to, to grow more, yeah. you know. But during the journey of the distribution company, which was Stingray and Digital B, we bought Saxon along. Okay. Lloyd Mosselet, yeah? Because um, we approached Mosselet to do a production, which, you know, Saxon was a great sound for dub in it, so everybody was saying, you know, it's a big song and everything and, you know, I approached him, Mosselet, good friend, and, and I said, you know what, Mosselet, make we do an album with 10 or 12 of your wicked dubs mm. and just put it out to the public, you know, mm. and he was all for it, you know, and we sit down and we pick out a fair amount of tracks and we made the album and we put it out and the album went very well. Everybody grab on to it because them days no one would have really buy an album with a with a sound dub. But the way you know Saxon used to make his dub them was so exclusive, they sounded like record. Yeah. We could have get away with this album as a record. We never done a follow-up still, because at the same time now, you know, you have to deal with artists and they get a bit funny with with you voicing a dub and then you're putting it out as a record. So we didn't go no further with it, but what happened is we ended up doing production together as well. Mm -hmm. So I done a lot of engineering work for Mosselet and that was from like 9 to 2 coming up to when we built the studio here. And a lot of the stuff we decided to use as well as part of the distribution for the company. So wasn't only just Stingray Digital B, it was Saxon as well. So the three big label then is what made that. Okay. So I mean business is going fine and we decide I decided at the end of the day that I need a little bit more because you know we're going and spending a lot of money using other people's studio and I thought the amount of money we're using other people's studio. Or even if I'm going to make a trip to Jamaica to get my work done, it's still an expense, yeah. you understand? So, I decided and speak amongst my brother and we said, you know what, let's put a student together and at least we can spend a lot more time on our production. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you use other people's studio, you, you book it for four or five hours and sometimes when the hour are done, you just uh, feel the truth, you know yeah. what I mean? And somebody else ready to come in and it just mash up the whole vibe. Yeah. But anyway, in 96 we decided to put this thing together here. Mm. And um, we got someone in to, to build it personally. I mean, we was hardly here because we was making a lot of trips running around because them days is like when we used to press records because it was actual vinyl and that. We used to always pack our suitcases, two suitcases each, there's three of us and we're taking the plane. We're going New York, we're going Florida and we're going to Jamaica and we're making a round trip there and back. Mm. Not only just as a business trip but family as well mm. on the journey because we have family in these territories. Mm. But it was mainly business because we were selling records. Yeah. So we drop a New York, we sell records. We drop a Florida, we sell records. We drop a Jamaica, we sell records. Same time. Until we started to get acquainted with a distributor in New York, so it became easier. Mm -hmm. They started to press our records in New York. Then mm -hmm. we got familiar with distributors in Jamaica. They started to press our music in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And it kind of made it easier so we wouldn't have to be running around with all this heavy weight yeah. of, of tunes to sell. But it was just part of the journey to, yeah. to get to where mm. we are and then to let everyone else get familiar with the labels that we have distributing, mm. you know. So it was a, a constant thing like that. Not only just 
the Caribbean and thing, we done like all the um the Europe countries as well, you know what I mean? So we go France, Germany and all them places and it's about making contacts and dealing with people mm. on the journey as well, so which could help because yeah. in those days you had companies when we do production, we don't even have to worry about selling it because they'd license it and give us some money for it and, and then it, it makes it easier for us to continue doing what we're doing and they'd be the one making we're sure the it. tune reach where mm. we, you know, they'd be doing most of the work, so 97, studio set, felt good about it and, you know, we decided to open the door on my birthday, which was the 24th of February, yeah. 1997 and um, it just even just started to grow from there, you know what I mean? Because we started to get recognized and meet a lot of friends in the business, whether musicians, singers, on my travels and everything. So if you, if you look at, get a chance to look at the wall and see all those That's artists over yeah. a period, we all became friends and a lot of them is from traveling back on and forth to Jamaica, you know? So mm -hmm. what started to happen now, the studio set, a lot of them passing through England, probably on tour or anything, so they used to drop by and everything, mm -hmm. you know? My good friend Bobby Digital, he's always saying this studio is like home from home. I find everyone is saying, why well, your studio favorite digital B studio? You know what I'm saying? Cool. Well, if that's what you feel, then that's yeah. how you feel it, you know? But to be honest, that is where the idea came from because when we used to use studio here, it used to be some big church hall and you know, some basement thing, some little cool yeah. place. And, <laughs> <laughs> Some like a dopey looking place, you know what I mean? And that's where I said, we are night people, so we are work all night hours, and you have to walk in the dark in some big empty place and search your way till you reach to the studio. I said, no, sir. You know what I mean? When I went to Jamaica and see the little setup by the house, and I'm saying, well, that's really nice, you know, you, yeah. as, you, as you come out of your back door, you're reaching out your studio. Yeah. You know what I mean? What more comfort yeah. would you want? Yeah. You know, so from we put this together, that, that was it. That was just the start of even things lifting up more. Yeah. You know? What, what would you say music means to you? Oh, what could I say? What would I say? Music is like life to me, you know. Music is is, is part of my life, a big part of my life. Mm. You know, I made enough sacrifice to be here with the music and, you know, from family, kids, everything, mm. you know. And gradually as time goes on, it, it gets, you know, everybody gets to understand to see the what I'm about, yeah. you know what I mean? And they understand the old thing and it, it still works, you know, but mm. music is a very big part. So you... Yeah. <laughs> what challenges would you say a producer faces? Well, it's just a big challenge, you know, because producer is... It's like a director. It's like... It's like being a manager. It's like putting a whole creation of a product together. That is really a producer role, you know? So a producer have to predict, like, how they would like to hear their thing, how they would like it to sound, what they would love the musicians to do, what they would love the singers to come and sing, the type of thing you're putting out there. It's, it's all about production, you know? It's just like if you're, production of perfume and but music is you know the producers is, is where the creation comes in you know yeah. so everybody's got their kind of style you know because sometimes they listen and say well I know Sting is a one job studio thing and then they might listen to somebody else and say it's a dance art thing but everybody has to have play a part yeah. in doing different things but producers you know they have got a big role you just led into my next question. How would you describe your style? 
My style? Yeah. Well, alright. I always kind of get stuck on answering that kind of question, you know. But to me, I'm coming from a roots background still. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And um, I like more relaxed type of music, for real. So, like what many people would say more, it's my, some people call it lover's rock, but I wouldn't really call it lover's rock still because a lot of the lyrics is not based on just lover's rock, you know. Mm. Some, we, we do have a lot of reality really, songs. Mm. You know, very cultural songs on, you know, on these one drop rhythm, mm. you know. So, I think I will leave that one for the public, you know. <laughs> I think the public going to have to tell me that one, you know. But I still put it down to straight reggae music, mm. you know. I'm not going to put it in a bracket to say it's dance or it's lovers rock, it's roots, it's this or that, because that's what seems to happen now. Yeah. In the early days, we didn't know it like that. Music was just music, and it was under the banner of yeah. reggae. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now, nowadays, you know, with all this generation change and everything, then some call it downtown, some call it this, some call it, everybody call it all different kind of name. Mm -hmm. But the more I call it still, but it still come back down to me as sweet reggae music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You spoke about your friend being one of your inspirations along your journey. What are your other inspirations? For music? Yeah. Sound system plays a big part too. Okay. That, that's, you know, listening to other production is another inspiration. Okay. You know what I mean? Cars. And you have a lot of musicians as well as a good inspiration just to how they create music or how they play mm. what what we get out of them you know mm. so there's there's so much inspiration like it's hard to just pinpoint, pinpoint one directly but mm. my biggest influence i would say that put me in the direction of this being on the road putting that 100% in was probably digital. Yeah. 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 Tell us about your top five DJs. When you say DJs, radio DJ? Are we choose. talking about artists? You can, you can, you can, so you can choose. You could be artists. Artists. Do artists. Okay, my, my top five. Shabba Rats. Mm. I have to put him in the top five. Terra Fabulous was one. Mm -hmm. So I'd say two. You know, I'm gonna kind of go back to the old school days more than what's going on no. now. Mm. Bujo, mm -hmm. you know, three. Cobra was one, mm -hmm. four. Um, who will I put in the fifth place? Who <laughs> 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 will put in the fifth place? So many. <laughs> oh my God. Because you know, there's DJs like even Dirts, man. That, mm. You know, I, I really kind of gave a lot of ratings to Josie yeah. Whale. You know, these kind of DJ, I, 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 you know. So there's a few on the few. There, there, is, a, there is a few. There's a few more than five. What about sounds? Give me a top five there. My top five sound? Yeah. Okay. Saxon is my number one sound. Mm -hmm. Love Injection. Java sound. Um... um Next to someone that's really up there like that. You don't have to force it. No. <laughs> I'd rather stick to those yeah. three top sounds. <laughs> Unless we're going to go right back into the early days like the 70s. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean, we had 
Sound like Coxing I have to give enough respect yeah. to. Sound like Shaka I have to give enough respect to mm. because you know during my musical journey these was the sound that was really doing it yeah. for me from the late 70s coming up. Yeah. You know, so they Long also the played, a, played a big role. You know? yeah. What artists do you enjoy working with? Okay, um, I, I haven't worked with a lot of DJs still. But a um, few DJs that I did really enjoy working with one is Cobra, Cutterank, Super Ten, Saba Two, um, I think those are the main the main main ones. I mean apart from DJs like Gappy Rank, like you know, these are more the newer generation. Mm. You know, you have a, a, another little DJ called Baby Boom, you know, for DJ to look out for. Mm. So, so, so there is a few. And what about sounds you enjoy working with? Sound I enjoy working with? Yeah. Well, the only... In terms of sound, there's a lot of sounds. Mm. Because we have a thing where we do called Dockley. So I cut a lot of dub plates for a, a lot of the sound them. Mm. So I work with the artists for the sound them. Um, but there, there wasn't a lot of sound that I really worked with because after my sound career, I didn't, you know, back that really way. fill up that spot. Mm. So it's still going to go back to the, the earlier song them like when we were playing with Coxon song and Java song and Saxon song. Mm. These was the song that I used to enjoy working with. Mm. You understand? You know, they were the song I enjoy working with. Okay. And what was your most memorable production? For me? Yeah. I think my my memorable production is I, I I was working on a project with Luciano and um, it was a first set of tunes from out of the studio here and there was a particular rhythm we call People's Choice and I could always remember approaching Luciano to get a vocal done, you know. And he just came up with this lyrics that's called Vision and it's like thinking to myself, why would he come up with a song like that? Because you know that's something that I've been focused on over the years. It's like I have my vision, you know, mm. what I would like to see and like to do, you know what I mean? And that song just brought everything to together for me, so I kind of put that tune there up there because of that, yeah. you know, just for the lyrics alone and just for the old significance. Yeah, and the way everything just come together is mm. like, you know, I, I have visions and I have dreams that come through. Yeah. I thought, whoa, that tune there, mm. definitely at the top of my list. Can you explain to me what the difference is between a dub and a special? Well, to be honest, I don't, I don't see it being no different, you know. I don't really see it being no different nowadays. Because they use both the same name. But for me, a special is what people's looking at that their sound name is being called in the record, you know. Yeah. So they're using artists, everyday artists, and they're voicing their team and the artist is, is calling their name in it as, you know, they call it special. But it's still like dub. But in the early days now, for me, dub was like, you didn't have to have a tune that have no ID in there, like no sound name. But that particular tune is not any and any song can play. Mm -hmm. It might be a tune I produce and I've given it to one sound to play only. Mm. And to me, that's a dub. Okay. You understand? And it's even more special than special because yeah. the special, <laughs> the special nowadays is like 
the whole of the sound them can play. Yeah. But if you have a tune that is special that nobody can play, that's more than special. Mm. You know, and it don't have to have an ID, it's just that anyone can't play. That's more more than special. Mm. But um it's just the generation change and how they ID these things differently, you know? Mm. Yeah. Why? What is the need for dubs and specials? What's the need? Well, yeah. it's like being an artist, you know, a sound is performing. Mm. That's what it is and they want to perform for their audience. And by them having these special type of tunes, it's like it, it gives them more rating, mm. you know, because especially if they're playing with another sound and if a sound can't play a particular tune like what this sound um, you know they may get the better of the night so yeah. it's like performing and putting on a, a show so yeah. that's certain sound come that way yeah. you know tell us about your achievements well I've had a few achievements over the years uh, quite a few awards I had for best producer I had for best record label, I had for best recording studio. So it is very, yeah. you know what I mean? Because we've just been approached by people that's doing all these award ceremony, you know? Mm. And they put us on the, the voting list and well, I leave it to the public because I can't vote for myself. You don't need to, you know? from you got them, there's your answer really. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean we just won one the other day with the Black Awards um, for best, best recording studio, you know. Okay. So congratulations. It seems like we're constantly getting them, <laughs> you know. But it's nice. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of looking more forward to the reward now more than the award. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like that. <laughs> what advice would you give to an aspiring producer? Well, you know, sometimes it's not really easy, but if it's something that you love to your heart, because music is is from the heart, mm. you know what I mean? My love for music is endless, and all you have to do is just put in the work, you know, follow the journey, you know, mm. watch, other, watch other producers as well, learn from what you hear, learn from what you see, yeah. you know? Because mm. sometimes, you know, you get people coming and they say, oh, you do this, oh, you do that. It's all right to ask them one and two questions, but you have to listen as well and see what's going on as well. And then it's like you're going away and you do your homework and mm. you're saying to yourself, well, you know, I wouldn't do that, you know, I'll yeah. do this or Reflect. I'll go this way. And yeah. then you put your team together and by working with people, finally it will get, it will get better. Mm. What plans do you have for the future? Keep making more music. <laughs> <laughs> Keep making more music, you know, just it's just to continue. Mm. You know, it just doesn't stop because I mean we've been doing it so long. Mm. And um, yeah, the music world is kinda changed, it's not the same. Technology is changing and everything. It's not like what I'm used to. I love to hold a vinyl, you know. I like to hold my vinyl and yeah. look and see my label and information and yeah. all that on a CD and yeah. like you know, them things non-existent nowadays. So it's the old technology, the old thing is is changed, but music is still there. Yeah. <laughs> still be playing a lot today. So I just wanna just keep keep on keeping on until I can't keep on no more, yeah. you know? Yeah. How can our listeners or artists get in contact with you? Okay, we have our social media guard there. Um, we're on Facebook, so you have Dilly Stingray, you have Carlton Dilly McLeod, you have Raymond Sting McLeod, so there's three pages on the Facebook. Okay. We've got a fan page on the Facebook. We have Twitter which is Stingray Records, we have Instagram Stingray Records, we got LinkedIn Stingray <laughs> Records, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's social working, you know, yeah. so 
most of the social media out there, they can get us from there put in for Stingray Records or they can go to our website okay. which is stingrayrecords.net you understand and they, you know, they, they can contact us through there please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes, friends and family yeah well I'd like to bless up yourself <laughs> cameraman as well you have to bless you up um, and bless up everyone was really tuning to this program I'm gonna bless up my family especially Alan I'm gonna bless up Raymond Fritz right bless up all my kids and you know bless up all my artist friend and because there's, there's a lot of artist friend out there you know that's doing a lot and there's not much more I can say all right so you know we like to give a big bless up to Fire Red Station for making this happen, you know. Blessed love every time. <laughs> right now, Daniel, there's a big up Fire Red Station every time. Make sure you lock it. I'm me, I'm Chucky Banton, see? Make sure you keep it locked on and locked in in the hottest station on the planet. Fire Red! Yeah, man, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend, and then tell a friend. I didn't tell a girlfriend, I your boyfriend, and tell a next friend, see? Yeah man, this is Vivian Jones, I'm big up Fire Red Station, see? Most of every time, and that is it. Bless. Yeah man, big up Fire Red, you know? The Fire Red, you're killing my dead. Fire Red Station!